The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. With Kraft salad oil, you can make your own delicious and unusual French dressings quickly and easily. It takes only a minute or two, even if you've never made a dressing before. And because Kraft salad oil is super fine, it blends better with other dressing ingredients. It gives you perfect French dressings every time. And to start you on homemade dressings in grand style, Kraft has a free recipe folder for six delicious dressings. But more about that a little later. some time now, the great Gildersleeve's house has been bulging at the seams. This condition is always most evident when the family begins to stir in the early morning hours. His niece Marjorie is busy dressing Ronnie and Linda, her year-and-a-half-old twins, helping her husband Bronco get off to work, Leroy is getting ready for school, Bertie is bustling about the kitchen, and the water commissioner is gingerly picking his way about the house like a pedestrian in heavy traffic. Why, George, I could use another hour's sleep. I wonder why the twins have to wake up at 5 o'clock every morning. Isn't that little Ronnie? Marjorie will just have to break him with yelling through my keyhole like a Comanche Indian. Ronnie? Franco, have you seen Ronnie? He's in here with me, Marge. Oh, brother. Well, I guess I can't blame Ronnie if he has a Comanche for a father. <laughs> well, where's my other shoe? Leroy! Right here, Unc. Oops. What are you shouting about? <laughs> Just trying to make myself heard above the roar of the family. You did. Where, where's my other shoe? Linda wore it downstairs. Oh, my goodness. The shoe's as big as she is. I'll get it for you, Uncle. Oh, fine. I'll go shave. You can't. Huh? Bronco's taking a bath. Well, confound it. I'll get my razor and brush and shave in the laundry tub. <laughs> okay. Now he's singing. He'll be in there all day. Bronco! Bronco! Isn't that awful? Bronco! Oh! I didn't hear you, Mr. Gildersleeve. I was singing. <laughs> oh? I thought you'd caught your toe in the drain. <laughs> no, I was singing. Yeah. Well, would you mind handing me my razor and shaving brush? Your brush? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, a funny thing happened to your shaving brush. Oh? Yeah, you know that kitchen table Marge and I were shellacking to go in our new house? Yes. Yeah. Well, little Ronnie was helping us out. And before we knew what he was using, guess what he dipped in the shellac? <laughs> the cutest thing he ever saw. <laughs> oh, well. What's a genuine Wisconsin badger brush? Yeah, I've got it soaking in turpentine. Do you want it? No. No, I'll shave some other time. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gildersleeve. It's a good thing I'm even tempered. Some people would let a morning like this upset them. Here's your shoe, Aunt. Oh, thank you, Leroy. Hey, what's this on it? Seems little Ronnie was shining it with turpentine. <laughs> and uh, guess what he was using for a brush? Don't tell me, Leroy, I know. <laughs> you ready to go down to breakfast, Unc? You're coming, Leroy. Gosh, everything happened to you again this morning, didn't it? Well, that's what happens when you've got a lot of people living in the same house. Yeah. Too many, huh? I didn't say that, Leroy. Gosh, Marge and Bronco's house is practically finished. Why don't they move? Shh. Leroy, they're at the table. Well, good morning, Auntie. Good morning, Marjorie. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, I beat you to the table. So I see. Auntie, you didn't shave. 
Right. Yeah, I, I'm afraid our son's responsible for that, Marge. Ronnie? Yeah, he dipped Mr. Gildersleeve's shaving brush in the shellac. <laughs> oh, that little pixie. <laughs> pixie, I'd shellac him. <laughs> What's this, Leroy? I said I'd shellac him. Why, Leroy? That's not all I do around here. No, Leroy. Leroy, I don't think what Ronnie does concerns you. Yeah? I was here before he was. Before you were, too. No, just a minute, Leroy. I was here before either one of you. This is no way to start the day. We're all just one big happy family. Ha! <laughs> Leroy. Of course, there's a certain amount of give and take with people living elbow to elbow the way we do. Poor Auntie. We'll soon be able to move into our own house. Yeah, I just have two more rooms to paper and we'll be out of your hair. You Bronco, don't get the idea we're pushing you. You've never inconvenienced me, my boy. Now, where's my breakfast? Bertie! Martha Gilsleeve? Good morning, Bertie. My breakfast ready? Well, there was only two eggs left, Mr. Gilsleeve, so I'm fixing you and Leroy something else. No eggs, huh? Oh, Bertie, was that Unky's plate I brought out? Yes, ma'am. Oh, gee, I'm sorry, Unky. Bronco came down ahead of you, so I must have given him your breakfast. But, gosh, am I eating Mr. Gildersleeve's breakfast? Oh, well, I doesn't care. We're just one big, happy, hungry family. Yeah, I'd rather suffer through breakfast at Peavy's than sit there and watch Bronco eat my eggs. The man can only stand so much in one morning. Hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you this morning? Give me some eggs, Peavy. How's that? I haven't had breakfast, and I want a couple of eggs. How's the quickest way you fix them? Well, in the malted milk, I guess. <laughs> Peavy, a cold malted milk isn't my idea of a breakfast. Well, I can serve you a hot cup of coffee along with it. Coffee in a malt. Look, Peavy, will you just fry the eggs? Yeah, well. Certainly I'm having trouble getting breakfast this morning. Why didn't you eat at home? That's where my trouble started. You know, say. You don't know what I went through this morning. Twins woke me up. Bronco hogged the bathroom. Ate my breakfast. My, my. I'm just beginning to realize it'll be better for everybody when they move to their own little home next door. Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, a house without a family can get pretty lonely. I wouldn't know. Peavy, you don't know what I've been putting up with. Well, when Mrs. Peavy bought the parrot, I thought I was putting up with a lot. Every time I came home, that bird would yell at me, Hello, Doc! Hello, Doc! Hello, Doc! <laughs> I got pretty sick of him. Well, that's understandable, Peavy. And then one day the parrot got despondent, and Mrs. Peavy took him to the vet for a couple of days. Oh? It was amazing how quiet and lonely it was around the house. You may not believe this, but when that parrot came back, I welcomed him like a long-lost brother. May I have my eggs, Peavy? Yeah, yeah, coming up. Yes, Mr. Gildersleeve, you'll be a lonely man when your folks move. Uh, how'd you like to have a parrot for company? Phoebe, <laughs> you don't want to give up your parrot again. <laughs> well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I can sneak a little nap before dinner. Just in case those twins wake me at five again in the morning. Hey, Aunt. Hello, Leroy. You know, Marge and Bronco are moving over to their new house? They are. They started this afternoon. Hey, will somebody hold the door open, please? I got it, Bronco. Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Well, Bronco, moving so soon? Yeah, we thought we might as well. You know how it is. It's our first home. We're kind of anxious to get into it. Well, there's no hurry. I didn't think the house was quite ready. Oh, it's livable. Marge and I will have a picnic fixing it up. Uh, pardon me, Mr. Gildersleeve? Oh, yes. I was standing in the door, wasn't I? <laughs> I want to head and open the door to your house, Bronco. Oh, thank you, Leroy. Can I give you a hand, Bronco? No, thanks. We don't have much to move. Uh, see you around, neighbor. Oh, yes. See you around, neighbor. Funny they didn't tell me. Oh, well, the kids are impetuous. Evening, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bertie, what's the matter? Mr. Gildersleeve, they're moving. 
Now, Albertie, let's not take it that way. No, sir. Miss Marjorie's moving, Mr. Bronco's moving, them cute little twins is moving. They're all moving. I know, Bertie, but we've known for a long time that moving day would come. And it's come, they're moving. Well, Bertie, it's every family's dream to have their own home. It'll mean more comfort and more room for all of us, especially them. Miss Marjorie's been here since she was a little girl. Bertie's going to miss her, Mr. Gill, please. Well, all miss her, Bertie. She's going to leave an aching void. Well, that's life, Bertie. She has her own little brood now. She needs a nest of her own. Now she has it. This is happy moving day. Yes, sir, but she's going to leave an aching void. Uh, where is she, Bertie? I don't know whether she's over at the house or up in her little room. All I know is she's going to leave an aching void. <laughs> well, I'll go up and see if she's in her little room. <laughs> Bertie's inclined to be a little emotional about these things. It's perfectly natural for Marjorie and Bronco to want to be by themselves. One more room. Same as Leroy and I need more room here. Marjorie! Marjorie? Yeah, I guess she isn't here. I wonder if they've taken the twins over yet. Ronnie! Linda! Baby! Hmm. Room's empty. Sounds like an aching void. Little Marjorie. She's left her little room. Miss Jill, please, she's not here? No, buddy. She's gone. Something wrong? Not a thing. No, sir. Why should there be? This is happy moving day. <laughs> Greg Gildersleeve will be back in just a moment. With warm weather on its way, naturally you'll be serving more salads than usual. So I'd like to tell you about the easiest way I know to add new, delicious flavors to your salads. That's to vary the salad dressings. Make your own dressings with Kraft salad oil. Just to show you how easy it is, Kraft is attaching a recipe folder of six sparkling French dressings to every bottle of Kraft salad oil. Recipes like cranberry French dressing that gives color and tartness to cottage cheese. Then there's glistening lemon French dressing that adds a lively flavor to fruit salads. And for salads like tomato and egg slices, there's a recipe with spice and gusto, chili relish French dressing. Even if you've never made a dressing before, you'll find all six of these dressings very easy to mix. Thanks to new, lighter-bodied Kraft salad oil. It's the only oil that's super fine for faster, smoother blending of the dressing ingredients. Tomorrow, buy a bottle of Kraft salad oil and see how simple, how delicious homemade dressings can be. And the six recipes you'll get with Kraft salad oil are only the beginning. There are so many, many ways you can vary the flavors in your dressing. Get superfine Kraft salad oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings and baking. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve came home from the office this afternoon. He was surprised to find Marjorie and Bronco moving into their new home next door. Now, pangs of conscience assail the water commissioner because he's afraid he made it a little too plain that his house was crowded. Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, Bertie. May I have a word with you? Come on in, Bertie. Thank you, sir. What's on your mind, Bertie? Mr. Gillsleeve, I know you're upset about Miss Marjorie and Mr. Bronco moving so soon, but you didn't cause them to move out. You don't think so, Bertie? No, sir. They were going to move anyway as soon as they could get in, and today happened to be the day they could get in. Well, I feel I gave them a push this morning. Now, where would you get that feeling? All you did was complain about the twins waking you up at 5 o'clock, but you did that every morning. Yeah, I guess I did. So you didn't give them no push. Of course, you let Mr. Bronco know you was a little upset about having to shave in the laundry tub, but that's natural. Well, I hope he thought so. And you certainly couldn't call it pushing when Mr. Bronco ate your breakfast by mistake and you stomped out. Well, I shouldn't have done that. No, sir. Say, Mr. Gilsey, you did give him kind of a push, didn't you? <laughs> Move so 
someplace someday. Mormons excite me. Leroy, how can you say that? We're losing part of our little family. It's just moving next door. Even so, don't you feel a pang of regret? Well, I thought I felt a pang this morning. But guess I just ate too many pancakes. <laughs> I didn't get any eggs for breakfast either. Please, my boy, let's not mention eggs. It just reminds me how rude I was to Bronco. Ah, uh, stop blaming yourself. But I'll make it up to it. Yeah, I hear him coming downstairs now with another load. I'll help him move. Oh, Bronco! Oh, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Bronco, you know I'm sorry to see you go, don't you? Oh, yeah, sure. But if you must, I'd like to be of some help. Well, thank you, but... You've I've... been working pretty hard. <laughs> Why don't you sit down and let me carry that load? Well, Mr. Gildersleeve, this isn't heavy. It's nothing but my old college annual and some coat hangers. Well, isn't there anything else to bring down? No, I think that just about does it. Now, don't worry yourself about it. Well, I want to worry myself about it. I insist on doing something. <laughs> well, if you insist on carrying something, there's a yardstick propped in the window upstairs. You could bring that over. <laughs> Is that all? Marge and Bronco didn't have much furniture to move on. Well... Sorry I didn't offer to help earlier. Oh, thank you, Mr. Gildersleeve, but you've done enough. Ever since we've been here, you've been most kind. Uh, thank you, Bronco. I'm glad you feel that way. Of course, there is one favor we've kind of hesitated to ask of you. A favor? Well, what is it? Go ahead and ask me. Anything at all. You know that big picture of you upstairs? The one hanging in my room? Yeah, well, I'd like to take that over to our new house. <laughs> you would? My boy, it's yours. You go ahead and take it. Oh, thanks, Mr. Gildersleeve. I'll carry it over later. Yeah. Well, Leroy, I guess you heard that. Yeah? Bronco has no ill feeling toward me. He wants my picture. Yeah, I heard him tell Marge he had to have it. Well, what a devoted son-in-law. In moving, he knocked the plaster off a wall, and your picture's the only one big enough to cover the hole. <laughs> Bronco covered the hole with my picture all right. But I don't mind. <laughs> At least he didn't turn my face to the wall. <laughs> well, they won't admit it, but I still think they're upset with me. Hello, Gildy. Yeah, Judge Hooker. Hello, Judge. I wonder what he's doing with a rocking chair in the back of his car. If you're walking home, I'll give you a lift. Can't you see I'm walking in the other direction? Come to think of it, you are. What are you so down in the mouth about? Judge, Marjorie and Bronco are moving. I know. I'm driving over to give them this rocking chair for their house. Oh, that's nice of you. But I thought it was your favorite chair. It was. But you might say I'm off my rocker. <laughs> Silly old goat. Marjorie and Bronco need furniture. So I decided to start one of their rooms with my rocker. Oh? And perhaps I can add an item from time to time. Say, that's a good idea, Judge. Of course, I won't suggest it, but someday they may see fit to call it the Judge Hooker Room. Judge Hooker Room. <laughs> Why didn't those kids ask me for furniture? You mean they didn't? Well, they asked me for my picture. Your picture? Why? To hang in the yard to scare the crows away? <laughs> no, Judge. Hey, by George, I think I will ride back home with you. Well, hop in, Gilbert. Come to think of it, they hardly have anything in their living room. But I'll fix that. I'll give them some furniture. You can help me move it, Judge. Well, I can lift anything my sacroiliac can. Fine, fine, and I'll call Petey. We'll get it all done this afternoon. I'll square things with the kids. Are you on the outs with Franco and Marjorie? Yeah, I don't know, but I'm not taking any chances. <laughs> Uncle Mort, we can't deprive you of any more furniture. Now, Margie, you take the flower bowl off the end table. Oh, thank you, Uncle, but we don't have anything to put it on. Well, take the table. Here on, Bronco, pick it up. You kids need it. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, you mustn't do this. You're being too nice to us. No, no not at all. Uncle really wants you to have these things, Bronco. You bet. Now, uh... What are you going to do about a rug for your living room, Margie? A rug? Oh, we'll get one later on. We're saving for a good one. Well, take mine until you get yours. The twins need a rug to roll on. 
But Mr. Gildersleeve... And your young friends will be dropping in to see your new house. You want to be proud of it. But, Auntie, if we take the rug, the couch will mar your hardwood floor. Well, take the couch. <laughs> Leroy and I don't want it marring up our floor, do we, Leroy? I guess not. Oh, we shouldn't do it, Mr. Gildersleeve. If you don't, Bronco, we'll bring it over anyway, just as soon as PV and the judge come back from the last load. Well... Yeah, and Marjorie, you've always admired the andirons and brass screen in front of the fireplace. Take them along. But, Mr. Gildersleeve, your fireplace won't look right. What the heck? Take the fireplace. <laughs> oh, you must to give us so much. Now, now, I insist. Now, load up and scoot. All right. But it'll only be until we get our thing. And, Uncle Mort, you're a dear. I'm taking the table, Marge. You bring the flower bowl. All right, Bronco. I'll bring the fireplace. <laughs> Right, George, if I do say so myself. Nobody can stay on the outs with me very long. Well, there. Is there anything else for Peavy and me to carry over? Oh, yes, Judge. The parlor rug. The rug? Mr. Gildersleeve, I, I was just thinking. What, Peavy? It uh, might have been easier for you to move next door and let Marjorie and Bronco stay here. <laughs> All right, Peavy. Get hold of the rug. Well, roll it up first. I can't roll it up while you're standing no. on it. No, no, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute, fellas. Let's grab the couch first. Come on, Peter. Get hold of the couch. Get hold of the rug. Get hold of the couch. You know, now, lift everybody. Peter, are you lifting? No, hush up. <laughs> this way, man. I'll hold the door open. finally got them settled. Yep. At last, Marjorie and Bronco have their own little home. Now you and I have plenty of room, huh, Unc? Well, everybody will be more comfortable. That's for sure. Yeah, you can start shaving in the bathroom again. You bet. Well, let's go in, Leroy. I see you, Unc. You are now entering bachelor's heaven. Yeah. <laughs> bachelor's heaven. Very good, my boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm bushed. Let's go in the pot. Sure. Let's go in and take off our shoes. <laughs> well, Marjorie isn't here to tell us not to. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we want the parlor, we'll know it'll be empty. It does sound a little empty, doesn't it? Gosh, it should. About the only thing left in here is the piano. <laughs> well... Let's sit on the piano bench, Leroy, and relax. Okay. <laughs> oh, this is it. Yeah. Nice and quiet, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is. No screaming twins. Not much of anything. This is living, huh? <laughs> well... You know, tonight at dinner we'll have the table all to ourselves. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You can sit at one end and I'll sit way down at the other end. Well, if you wish. There'll be several vacant places to choose from. Yeah. On second thought, I think I'll come down and sit close to you. <laughs> Good idea, my boy. We have to stick close together from now on. Yeah. What a mean thing for Marge and Bronco to do. Go off and leave us after all we've done for them. Now, Leroy, this happens when children grow up. Yeah? Just have to face it. We've lost them. They'll grow away from us from now on, leading their own busy lives. You mean we won't see them anymore? Oh, it won't be that bad. Families get together once in a while. Yeah. I guess they'll be over for their Christmas present. <laughs> Well, they should be back before then. My birthday's in July. I wonder if they'll remember it. No, we can't count on anything, Uncle. Uncle? Yes, Marge. Marjorie! Come on, Leroy. May, uh, may I come in? You bet. We were just talking about you and Bronco. Yeah, we take back everything we said. <laughs> come on, let's go in the dance. Well, for a moment, I just came... 
for a cup of sugar. Oh. Is that all? Hey, is my wife over here? Come in, Bronco. She's here. She just came to borrow a cup of sugar. She doesn't need any sugar. She doesn't? Marge, you know you've got ten pounds in the kitchen. Well, I... She just doesn't want you to know she's homesick, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, little Marjorie. She misses us already? That's our girl for you. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be right back. When you buy a salad oil, why not get the lighter bodied oil? That's why more and more women are asking for Kraft salad oil. It's a special oil made by Kraft's exclusive superfining process. And superfining gives it lighter body for faster, smoother blending with other ingredients. With Kraft salad oil, you're sure of perfect homemade dressing. You're sure of the finest baking. Tomorrow, get Kraft salad oil, the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings and fine baking. <laughs> Got to get up early in the morning. Better set the clock. Yes, yes. Right, George. At least it's good to know he has the kids right next door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> The old bed feels good tonight. Sure. I can look out my window and see their little house. Hmm. Yeah. There's Bronco fooling around in the kitchen. He's raiding the icebox. What a nice family arrangement. Yes, sir. Really? Oh, sure. Nice family. Who? What's that? Bronco! Bronco! Oh, my goodness! You sounded better in my bathtub. <laughs> Noisy neighbors. Good night, folks. See you next week. Great Builders Lead is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White. It is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Dick Krenner, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Dick LeGrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Done up just right, a delicious hamburger can be truly a gourmet's delight, a big deal in eating pleasure. Of course, just about every good cook knows that a dash of craft prepared mustard really makes a hamburger. Because when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Craft mustard, naturally. There are two kinds of craft prepared mustard. Mild craft mustard, if you like it smooth and delicately spiced. Snappy craft mustard with horseradish added, if you like it nippy. Get both kinds of Kraft's prepared mustard at your food store. Next, Groucho Marx presents You Bet Your Life on NBC.